Hi everyone, today I thought I'll start a new series and I'm planning to make um, a few episodes in the subject of color therapy. Now this would be good for someone who is experiencing some sort of stress, um, maybe you know something happened that, um, well basically anything that is causing you uh, any kind of level of stress i'd say probably low to medium stress but even if it's very high stress this might help as well and the um, reason why i decided to make this series is because recently i have um, for the first time probably experienced uh, quite a severe case of um, pds um, thank goodness everyone is fine, but um, what has lingered for a few days straight after was a very strong case of PTS. And um, yeah, so the way I deal with things is um, <clears throat> I do things that I enjoy, for example, gardening, painting and various other things that give me that sense of um, relaxation and pleasure and also taking my mind off something that I don't want to think. Now um, all the other things are great but today I want to share something that is um, that I find quite helpful and I hope you will find this helpful too. Now it's a simple exercise. I thought to start the series with something that is um, easy to do for anyone even if you don't have any art skills or you haven't ever held a brush in your um, hand before. I thought you would still be able to do it and enjoy it and hopefully that will help you to uh, move on from a traumatic experience or from any type of stress that you're experiencing. So for that you will need a few things. Now um, I will use things that I already have because obviously I have a lot of things in my studio but if you're completely new to art you don't need to use all of them you can substitute things you don't need to go out and buy all of them so first of all you'll need three colors of your choice and um, I am going to work with watercolors today so this is what I'm recommending to use and you have to pick three colors that you find most um, that you find yourself most attracted to right now and it could be any color combination um, that you can think of right now for me these are the three colors the idea is that if you pick three colors that you are liking the most now that once you start working with them, you will feel more relaxed. So that's that. Now, if you don't know how to pick colors, you can um, Google watercolor swatches and um, or you could go to like Schmincke's website or Daniel Smith, look at their watercolor charts and see what colors you are um, attracted to. That is, of course, if you're a total beginner, then you'll need some sort of a mixing tray. Now I'm using a porcelain mixing tray and I already squeezed out these three colors. You could substitute it with a plate. Um, a white plate that would be great and you would need to buy it and then just keep it sort of to a side so that you don't mix it uh, you know with your other like eating plates so that's that brush obviously you need a brush and I'm going to use a really affordable brush this is a J Jackson Squill 10 Zero I have mentioned it many many times and it's a simple great brush You'll need some sort of a paper, uh, which I recommend to be watercolor paper in this case. And I'm using also affordable paper today, which is from B Paper right here. And it's the cold press watercolor paper, which is 300 GSM. So it's got a really nice weight to it. And then if you already have it, then that's great. You can go ahead and use it. 
If not, you can also substitute it with something simple. So I'm talking about circle cutter. These are great for this type of uh, exercise. Um, if you don't want to buy one, if you don't have one, what you can do is just obviously um, maybe take a plate, circle it uh, with a pencil and cut it with scissors. That would be a you know, cheap way of doing it. So I am going to go ahead and think of the diameter that I want my circle to be. All right, so I decided to switch to the voiceover and speed up the process a little bit because it was actually uh, quite a long um, video just of swatching and I thought you get the idea anyhow. So in the end, I chose the diameter of 15 centimeters for the circle that I cut out here and it was a good size so it was something that wasn't too big and equally wasn't too small to work on so it it worked out really well here i decided to um, separate the circle into a half and then um, each half into three parts and I didn't do a great job it wasn't sort of centered really well but it doesn't really matter um, the point of this exercise is just to relax and not certainly not stress about things like that so I'm starting with the first color and the first color is Schminke Rutile Yellow and the idea is that I start with the strongest mix of the color, which means the ratio of pigment to water is um, so that there is a lot more pigment and a lot less water. And as we go down this triangle, there will be less of the pigment and more of the water. Now, Rutile Yellow is a beautiful color and obviously I am currently absolutely loving it because it's one of the colors that I picked for these three colors. However, it's not the best color to mix into a light shade. It just sort of disappears into nothing and it's very hard to see a difference between four of these strength of swatches as you will see uh, especially since it has dried um, and it's kind of a little bit more settled uh, there's really very hard to see kind of that um, gradation or the the um, darkness going slowly into lightness so the next color I am moving on to is Daniel Smith Aussie Red Gold. Now this is just a gorgeous orange and I'm so surprised it has taken me so long to get this color and I was totally inspired by Jean Haynes um, color palette that she has um, collaborated with Daniel Smith to bring out which features 10 of her favorite colors from the Daniel Smith range and this one is one of them and it is just such a beautiful vibrant yet warm and kind of natural sort of looking orange it's um, sometimes an orange is very hard to pick if you want something quite vibrant it tends to be less of a natural color it's a little bit more almost like a fluorescent it has that sort of like a you know glowing orange that's very hard to find in nature or otherwise you'd find something like a cadmium which is very milky and warm but is quite opaque now this color is beautifully transparent and you can create beautiful mixes with it and um, even at its lightest it uh, looks very pretty um, like a very pale almost peach 
orange kind of color um, and of course at its strongest and then the mid points as well it's just a beautiful color all together the third color I'm doing and as you can see I'm doing them uh, by leaving the other three colors in between and soon you will find out why so I'm doing this voiceover very late at night and um, I find that I like my voiceovers at this time the best because it's sort of I do this like a whispering voice um, because my son is asleep and therefore I obviously try to talk quietly and that kind of works out really well in terms of the video voiceover being quite peaceful and relaxing and because it's a color therapy we're doing today I thought that would be lovely. Now this third color I'm really really uh, obsessed with right now and it's not just this one particular one uh, although I really like this one but there is also by other brands um, similar turquoises basically turquoises is the or the, the cobalt turquoises are the colors that I absolutely love right now so this one was the cobalt turquoise by Schmincke um, it is a really really beautiful um, turquoise color that also looks great when it's watered out and being a cobalt as you will soon realize it granulates beautifully and it's such a gorgeous color to have for mixes now what I'm doing next is going I'm going to um, fill in those remaining three triangles and I'm mixing the colors on uh, each of the sides so in this case it's the Schmincke Rutal yellow and Daniel Smith Aussie red gold and I'm trying to create a color in between uh, those two colors so something that is not one or the other but right in between uh, I have to say that looking back at it especially after the colors have dried I really should have added a little bit more of the um, rutile yellow to make it swing more to the left because uh, as it is right now it's kind of quite similar to the right um, side of the swatches um, so it's not different enough is what I'm trying to say so now this next color is super surprising in ha in how it came out and um, I'm mixing the Daniel Smith Aussie red gold with Schmincke cobalt turquoise now I could have guessed that it would have been a green but to be honest I thought it would be a very muddy kind of dirty green I didn't think I would like this green at all uh, however as I kept on swatching and then particularly after the color has dried and the cobalt has settled into the little uh, grooves of the paper to reveal the beautiful granulation and pigment separation it's just a color that is so beautiful and I definitely will use these two colors to create a green in the future and that's why this exercise is so useful it just kind of makes you sit down and get to know your watercolors particularly those that you are currently attracted to um, what we tend to do is just sort of squeeze out squeeze out a few colors into a palette and just get on with it and paint with them but um, not often do we actually mix them sort of you know two colors together to see what will happen quite often we just use them as convenience colors or I'm just maybe speaking um, about myself here I do that quite often although I do try to mix colors but if there are some colors that I really really love 
I just tend to use them as they are. Um, so here I'm doing the other two remaining colors, which is the cobalt turquoise with the rutile yellow. Now that's another beautiful color altogether. It came out very milky, very creamy, and um, also it looks very beautiful in those four strength of the color um, pigment to water ratio swatches. And that is pretty much it for this exercise. All right, so here they are, all nicely dried, and what a lovely color combination it is. Just from three colors, we have created three new colors. And then obviously we can also start um, adding, like for example, to this color, I would add more yellow next time, and we would create another color. So again, a color between this one and this one. And same thing here. I would add either uh, one or the other color to it and um, you could create suddenly a lot more and multiply the colors. But the idea was that you just concentrate staying sort of in lines and if it's a little bit wonky that is absolutely fine but um, the colors are very therapeutic to look at and also you can see half of them is quite sort of bright and vivid and the other half is sort of, they're quite, um, you know, complementary like that, but they also look great in the trio of it as well so you can look at it in different ways let's have a look at this beautiful stunning green that I definitely will want to mix again um, I hope you can see the gorgeous granulation here and the cobalt uh, turquoise coming through in these little areas um, right there how beautiful it is and then let's have a look here where the cobalt Turquoise was mixed with the Rutile Yellow. It's a completely different color and I can't see that much of cobalt here. So perhaps if I added a bit more, then maybe I would. But yeah, so this is it for today and we are going to have quite a few um, episodes of color therapy in the next coming weeks. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching and see you soon.